Cousins, we have an incredibly exciting video for you today. Uh, I'm going to take you around the warehouse. I'm going to talk about some just getting down to business activities we got to do. We're going to talk about jewelry. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff we've bought. If you look over my shoulder down there, you're going to see a bunch of the stuff I've been doing for this video. Check it out. And folks, it's Rusty. I'm your cousin and you're mine. And we're all just out here trying to live our life, make a buck or two, take care of ours. Um, and if I may be so bold, I would say we should be trying to make sure that we're not just thinking of ourselves and we're trying to take care of other people as well. And if we can all do that, folks, what a nice life this would be for everyone. Um, I'm in the uh, one of the trucks from the fleet today. I'm heading back from a home goods store where I purchased two large, um, uh, I guess you'd call them storage units, um, shelving units, as well as a bunch of tubs. Now, I like to buy my tubs if I can at places like Goodwill thrift stores because I usually can get those for four to six dollars for used ones versus anywhere from twelve to twenty some dollars when you buy brand new ones. So, anyhow. That's what I'm up to today. I'm heading back. I'm gonna show you. Now, the beginning of this video is definitely not gonna be the sexiest of, I'm, you know, look at this thing. I'm wheeling and dealing. Um, I'm just shocked at this value of the thing I'm getting. Well, I mean, thing about this channel is that um, I'm being honest and straightforward here. I'm not gonna pretend like every day is finding that awesome deal. I'm not gonna pretend like I don't have to do hard work um, that, the work itself is not directly tied to a sale or to value. But there are things you have to do in this business like picking up all this junk you got off the floor and sorting it and putting it up on a shelf and uh, giving yourself space to work. Now, that is a, a, a necessary part of a jo the job if you want to be efficient and help yourself out later. What I'm gonna be doing today in large part is is uh, it, it is a, a piece of the puzzle that helps me and the people here at the warehouse be successful from start to finish. Um, you know, you can go out and find that item, you can buy that item, and that's the beginning. At the end, you make that sale and that money comes in, 30 days passes, you don't have to refund it, they don't return it, and then you get to, you know, skip to the bank. But there's a lot of junk that happens in the middle of that. In the meantime, research, repair, photographing, uh, listing, you know, sorting it, storing it, making sure you know where it's at, uh, making sure it doesn't get broken, packaging it, getting it out, uh, and, and every other thing too. So this is a long intro disclaimer. This is a talking head, boring, rusty, but, uh, but it's honest. <laughs> That's all I can say is I'm being honest here about what I'm doing and so I'm going to show you a little bit of this. It will get more fun. If you're still here, then you know that there could be more to it than this. And there is. I'm going to show you some cool stuff. We're going to talk about what we're listing right now. I'm going to show you some stuff that has sold. Um, and we're going to get into it today. Folks, it's chock full. I hope I'm going to try to have a good time, get some things done. Hopefully, uh, this can help you. You can learn a little bit. Enough of my blabbering. Let's get into it. A one and a two and a three. Rusty the reseller, he'll sell you the shirt off his back. <laughs> well, I have done it. Here we are, folks, looking at a bunch of this stuff that we recently picked up at a thrift store. We bought them out. The stuff is partially unpacked, just oodles and oodles of items and that's not including everything up on the shelves here there's stuff over here as you can see rolling across paintings and stuff i'm working on that one and then we got this stuff over here 
on this and, and the sad thing is it's completely blocking the photo booth here folks and um you know man we just i want to get back in there because it's so much fun i mean we use the ever living snot out of that thing during uh 2020 when when you know covid went to war against us and uh it's such a good time if you don't have a photo booth man do yourself a favor and go get one because they are a hoot and a half but anyhow here we go we got these we got these tall um, shelving units here and a bunch of tubs. And what I'm gonna attempt to do here is get all this junk, first off, off of this wall, get one put here. And then over here, get this stuff out of the stinking way and get it up against the wall there so that we can put all this stuff in tubs. And I'm gonna need way more than this, but this will get me started at least on just one of these. And, uh, and then let's see what it looks like after I can get some of this cleared out. All right, got the first round of stuff all moved out of the way here. Oh, look, I got a wall. Mona Lisa up there looking down on me with, uh, you know, really sweet, loving eyes. Don't tell anybody I got that. I don't know if it's supposed to be outside the museum, but anyhow, uh, gonna cut into this sucker and get her, get her up here. All right. Oh. Doesn't that not just look beautiful? I mean, here's the thing, folks. When you look at this right here, if if seeing this induces any amount of stress, do not be alarmed. It just means that you're a, a, a normal, probably pretty good person, right? You have you have um, you have integrity, and you have uh, you have limits for yourself. And uh, it's not that I don't. It's just it takes time sometimes to get organized, and so I'm trying to do it here. Um, I'm excited. This is what it'll look like. There's nothing in those yet because I got to do some sorting. Um, I'm going to try to get some of this up into these, right? That's a step number two. And then step number three is get this stuff then out of the way. Do the same thing over here with this one. Get more tubs and then get our lovely uh, lady over here back up on the wall. <sighs> that was a heck of a lot of work, folks, but we got it. Let me take you through the door so you can see the difference. All right. Now, look at this room. We have painting I'm working on here. Office area of this particular room in the warehouse. Stuff up here. I'm going to pan back here. This is all stuff that was originally here, right? But you see there's nothing on the floor. Oh, it's so good. Look at this over by the photo booth. We got stuff in this. All right there, took out stuff I'm gonna recycle, threw some stuff away, and then we got this section right here on the floor by that. And I think I've decided, based on everything I had to do here, and the extra cost of the tubs and uh, these, which we're looking at about $104 per one of these at the home goods store I was at, plus about 12 to $13 per tub, Okay, I didn't do tubs over here because they were in their own boxes. I'll, I'll mess with that later. Let's get some more sales in so I can, um, you know, justify spending that on organization materials. But I think I decided for this room alone, mind you, I'm not going to buy any more uh, items to source or, you know, to, to sell until this or this equivalent has sold. Once that has sold, stuff's off the floor, and then things start being freed up in the um, spaces up here, then I'll feel comfortable loading more items into this particular area of the warehouse, uh, just because I don't like that stuff on the floor. You know what I mean? I just don't. It never ceases to amaze me, the interesting things that come out of some of these gigantic lots. There's a bunch of old antique toy cars in this. No telling what's in that. This is a podge podge of there's some weird dolls in there. Looks like some silver plated stuff. Cookie jar. Down in here we got baseballs and other toy cars and racing stuff. We got old dolls down here. Who knows what's in the tube? Some kind of old paper ephemera, which is kind of cool. I don't know there. And as we swing on over, same situation here. I mean, just oodles of interesting things hanging out in there. Tons of old camera equipment in here. Now we're looking at lead crystal and stuff like that. Old skillets, um, you know, cast iron stuff. Oh my goodness, oodles of these like ceramic painted figurines. Um, all kinds of different stuff in here. Asian stuff. Um, 
down in here. I just, you know, I've not even gone through this yet, folks. Um, more Polaroid. Here's old toys and cars again. I mean, there's just no telling. We got old books here, old books, old Bibles. Um, and I'm still looking through all of this. And then, of course, Barbie. Now, let's be honest with our sales here for a moment. Her hair has looked better in the past. I don't know if she just didn't bring a comb with her or what, but look how tall, doggone tall she is. She's as tall as my chair here. Um, and uh, so <laughs> I don't know if that's like a Facebook Marketplace type sale I should do or if that's uh, if that's going to be eBay. I've not even looked her up yet to see the value, but I've got a ton of stuff to go to through here, uh, folks. But uh, I think I need to get into the jewelry next, and we're going to talk about that. Folks, I pulled out a few things here from this very large lot, and I'm going to be going through at the warehouse here today. Right here, we've got sorted out some very nice, what we would probably put in a title of, like, say, an eBay listing as high-end costume jewelry. Well, why would I say it's high-end? <clears throat> well, old Rusty here has been selling jewelry for quite a while, and <clears throat> I have come across... Dozens upon dozens of different varieties, brands, and manufacturers. I've also spent a lot of time researching um, the value and, and the sales uh, prices of various brands and various pieces of costume jewelry. You can see this one right here on the back if I'm looking at it. For example, we've got, well, on the front, a, a fairly attractive and, you know, um, uh, a very uh, large variety of <clears throat> types, sizes, and shapes of, of rhinestones and other aurora borealis is what they call that sort of iridescent look there. Very uh, uh, kind of an attractive, round, larger brooch piece on the back. You got a nice slick back. Um, no holes open, so I'm, I can assume with pretty high confidence that this um, is not holding actual gemstones these are actually plastic or glass and then if i look up here it says weiss w-e-i-s-s -S -S, which is uh, a mid to higher level uh, brand in the costume jewelry world okay <clears throat> and so what we've done is we've sorted out a variety of pieces that either uh, because of their uh, the way that they are made and or because they have certain brands that command higher values. And we're making a, a lot here today that we're going to um, put up on eBay and sell these all together for, instead of selling individual pieces for, say, 10 to 20 or $30 a piece, we're going to put one up for this whole thing for maybe five or $600 and try to make a large sale very quickly. This particular piece does not have a brand on it, but if you look very, very closely, First off, the design is different than your average brooch. This is sort of a, a spiral motif. You've got these um, faux pearls. But the thing that I find so interesting about this piece particularly is that you have these um, pearls or these simulated pearls that are not um, glued in place. Rather, someone has taken the time by hand to take a steel cord, as you can see right here by my poorly clipped thumbnail, um, and they have strung these up. So these have been strung all the way around in place, all the way around. They're not <clears throat> technically attached um, to the rest of the piece. They are held in place by the tension of the metal cord that's holding it on there. And I, f I find that uh, someone put a lot of effort into this piece. And uh, this was not just like a, an easily manufactured or mass-produced piece. And I can tell you that based on the fact that this was done by hand. <clears throat> and so we have something like this we're going to get into. Behind that, <clears throat> we have a variety of watches. I mean, there's a ton of watches in here, folks. Well, many of these likely are not currently operating, and I would bet that 75% of those that are not operating simply need a new battery in order to operate. And then all of these folks are brand new. I say new, I, I call them NOS, stands for new old stock, meaning these are new in the sense that they have not been opened or used before or worn. However, they um, are uh, old stock, meaning they were produced several years ago. This is not the greatest example because this brand is not like 
super high end or sought after by any stretch. However, we have a very cool old case here and I need to find uh, in there if the, if, if the watch that originally came in here is in here or not, but this is a very nice old school Bulova beautiful uh, color velvet in here to hold a watch and look how awesome this like art deco design um it's it's this is honestly more like a crossover between art nouveau and art deco the the definitely the 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 lines playing out like this is a very art deco piece but then when you uh you know kind of form but then you have the kind of the flowy the curves uh, of the woman and just a, a woman being um the central focus here in the emblem that's more of an art nouveau um style choice so you've got this interesting crossover between the two different styles uh old school i would need to do some research on this patent number to determine roughly the age of manufacturer but if i can find a nice gold or gold filled watch to put in this and sell it with the case that will definitely increase the value um, of the overall you know item lot as I move forwards here, you're going to see a variety of old uh, buttons, but then there's other stuff in here as well. What do we got? We got some costume jewelry. It looks like in here, some uh, some some various rings. Now this is sort of a telltale sign of something that's costume and also not all that valuable. Some really cool looking stones. The motif is is attractive. However, it's made to expand, and and so two things here. Number one. Um, it's easier to manufacture and it's cheaper to manufacture something that uh, expands. That way you only have to make one size. You don't have to make all the different sizes. Number, But, but the problem with that is that over time, this little cord, this little elastic piece could break. And when it breaks, uh, if it does, uh, you're, you're, you're done with the ring. <laughs> it's over for you uh, because it'd be very, very difficult to repair that. Not really worth it, honestly. <clears throat> but inside here, we have a lot of buttons. But on the bottom side, and I know this because I dumped it in, we got a lot of other things in here. We got some um, some pins, some metals, some brooches. And I don't even know what's going on here. But we've got uh, cats... Uh, Katzenyamer, you got some sort of a, um, a shape down here, um, and then you have a star of some kind, and then you got a bunch of cats, <laughs> and you got what appears to be Latin. This is uh, is copper, okay. I don't know what it was for, where it came from, where it was made. I know nothing about it, so that's gonna be fun to look through that. We got a bunch of other stuff, and we've got um, other pieces of costume jewelry and things on the bottom but buttons we're going to go through those at some point soon a lot of sorting to do there over here uh and i showed this in a previous video some of these but we got tie bars we got cufflinks we got push pins and then we have various other pins this is a looks like a, a scouts girl scouts or it says it right there girl scouts and then we've got other things like wings like uh what is this delta Okay, so that's like an old school pen from, from an airline manufacturer. This right here looks like a sword. So we've got some cool stuff in here. A lot of these we could sell. We, if there's ones that are higher value, obviously we'll sell them by themselves. If not, we'll sell them in a lot. Right over here we have some nicer, um, you know, nicer. Some of these are more, um, for lack of a better term, uh, like sort of like almost like tribal uh, we've got some of these older older bead type necklaces and I don't know if they are old or if they're just made to look old again I'll have to do more research to figure that out but they do have some pretty ornately carved um, beads on here like this look at that it's like a person's face and I don't even know what that's made out of it feels like wood uh, but I'm not exactly sure it's not heavy like bone but we've got these very interesting looking older style um beads of various kinds i bet these little pieces right here bone i don't really know what that is um i'll have to look into it but we got some cooler jewelry in there and then here's a bunch more of these push pins i mean just gobs and gobs of these push pins here and then this is just a hodgepodge of various stuff we haven't fully sorted yet. I mean, we got a lot of sorting to do. We could sell just the necklaces by themselves, or we could put them with other stuff if we wanted to. Starting from the floor coming up, we got a large kind of box chest right here with a nice solid wood um, uh, jewelry kind of, you know, holding 
box here, a jewelry box, with some, you know, this is a uh, velvet again, red velvet. Um, it's kind of nice. And then various types of um, cigar boxes and various wooden boxes. Some of them are carved, others are not. You got to be careful with if you're going to sell. Well, first of all, all these boxes is what a lot of the stuff that we bought came in. And the awesome thing about that is that we can sell the boxes by themselves too. They have value as well. You may or may not realize that, but you know, if you went out to your grandpappy's uh, barn or garage or something, there may be just some old junky wooden boxes laying around. Don't throw those out, folks. Sell them. People will buy them. Look, look at this. This thing right here, it's got old nails holding it together on the sides. Inside here, we have this little wooden box, and this would have held... It could have held anything. Could have held a, like a little tool, like an instrument. Could have held a, a knife. Uh, maybe it, it might have originally been a cigar box, so it could have held a cigar. I don't know. But if you're selling cigar boxes, you do have to be careful with regard to where that box was manufactured. If it has, um, say for example, let me move this over, and I can I can I can show you as well as tell you. Um, this is a cool little box here. This opens up. Oh, right like this nothing nothing fantastic but it's got it's all solid wood right who knows what its purpose was something like this this is a romeo and juliet but it says habana and this is a cuban look at this republic of cuba i love this old stamp but the problem is there are still embargoes in place with regard to cuban products particularly cuban cigars and so if you were trying to sell that on ebay if they caught you uh, they would automatically delist at that one. They would take it down, right? They would take down your uh, listing and they'd say, hey, you've violated a policy. Do not relist it. Why do I know that? Well, Rusty's done it before. <laughs> not intentionally, <coughs> but it happened. Uh, boneless salt codfish. Some of these, especially when they're branded and they talk about what their purpose was and what they held in the vessel, that's uh, definitely sought after as well. Here we have a variety of collectible spoons. And we'll just take a second here to kind of look at this. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but we'll talk about how to evaluate these to some degree. Now, these are no different than any other item. You want to do your research. Don't just rely on your own experience or any of that. Like, you know, you'll get a good idea if you go through a few of these. And the best way to learn about these is simply to put your hands on a bunch of them and inspect them. So when you're out at antique stores or things and you see them and you want to learn about them, get your hands on them, take a look at them, examine them, and you'll learn the differences. For example, I pulled this one up a second ago. So it, much like jewelry, the top is not really going to tell you a whole lot about the spoon other than to tell you what its purpose is. And so on the tops of these usually is where you'll see what it's commemorating, either a particular um, location or an occasion, an event, something like that. And so in this case, it says Norway. But if I flip it over on the, the little neck part here not the the spoon itself or the top but right in here it says efns if you say ep or epns things like that these are uh silver plated electro plated uh and, and they're they follow the same uh type of guidelines as, as regular flatware a lot of the times this one is a little stinker because i have identified something here that either it's entirely false or it's indicating uh, a certain spot. Uh, so what I mean by that is, look, Philadelphia, Cradle of Liberty, great. And this little spoon, it's kind of lightweight. I can tell just by looking at it when I flip it over that it's pretty low quality. Now look, look at this. Do you see kind of how that is just very, very flat and that the, um, you know, pretty deep grooves in here and pretty shiny. Um, stuff that's made out of silver, has silver on it, is usually a little darker and going to be a little bit more tarnished. Okay, that's a, per that's a good example right there. Do you see how the right side is more flat and not a whole lot of texture? It's also a little bit darker. That's got some silver content. Now, here's the tricky part. This thing says sterling on the back of it. Sterling. It may be indicating that this piece right here that's glued onto it is actually sterling because whenever I start to bend this a little bit, be very careful. Do you hear that? I'm going to try it again. Click. I'm going to do it again. Listen. I don't know. 
if you can hear it, but basically when I bend this, I hear some crackling noise. That's what it sounds like. Something that's made with silver, sterling silver, will not crack like that. You can bend them and eventually break them, but they're not going to make crunchy noises. And that crunch noise is indicative of a very cheap alloy. And so I do not for a second believe that this whole spoon is sterling silver. Maybe this little top piece, but it could be one of those that is just lying to me. Um, here's another one. Got a cool little uh, set of uh, a crest here up on the top. Kind of a goldish color, so it might have been gold-plated. Canada, it says. We're going to flip it over. It's got this cool little twirly situation here. Do we see anything on the back? Uh, no. And sometimes they will not have any information. Um, so you have to kind of do your best guess. Um, but if they are made of gold or silver, a lot of times they're going to indicate that. Here's kind of a cool one. we got a nice little crest at the top. It says... Illinois, the state of Illinois, and of course you got the state down there on the bottom. You flip it over here on the neck again. You see right there is some info. Let's take a look. Mm, can I get you to focus here? Here we go. It says T H Martinson, Martinson, E P N S Norway. That's cool. Um, let's let's zoom back in here. Grab. Maybe another one that's really interesting looking. Here's one. It's kind of got an open and open spot up there. Arizona, it says. Flip it over. We got like the 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 back part that's kind of indented again. If I bend this, now yeah, do you hear that crackle? Very cheap, very cheap alloy. A lot of these that I have here are fairly cheap. Now it doesn't mean that nobody would want them. But um, it's not like they're made of precious metals or anything. This is a cool Virginia City. I like this one. It's got a little bit more weight to it. It's kind of intricate. Um, this, to me, screams something a little bit more valuable than one of these just cheap aluminum or whatever else this is stuff. I'm going to keep looking. Hope, hope that I'll find something that's worth a little bit more. But my guess is I'm going to put this in a lot. Expo 74 Spokane watch. Spokane, Spokane. Uh, I like oh, some of these old, really old spoons are pretty cool. Never been a collector of these. Some people are, and they love it. Um, and that good for them, you know. Here's one that has kind of a dangly piece. So now I have these large double zipper storage gallon bags. I got some others down here. And as you can see, I'm starting to sort through different types of costume jewelry. We've got some gold tone necklaces here. This is kind of a combination of gold and silver tone. And then over here are a bunch um, of faux pearl necklaces, <clears throat> as well as other necklaces that have um, a little bit nicer quality. They're heavier. I mean, these are legitimate, um, you know, minerals and, and, and rocks and things that have been polished into small beads. So they aren't just plastic. They're nicer than some of those are certain brands that you would recognize, like Monet, Napier, or whatever else. But you'll see I have this large tub, and then this one as well. <clears throat> the combined weight between the two of these is right around 155 pounds. 155 pounds of costume jewelry. <laughs> and I mean, it is, it, it's a lot. It's a, it's a combination of all the things you can imagine. Necklaces, bracelets, cuffs, um, earrings, brooches, what have you. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, this and split it up. Nobody wants 155 pounds of jewelry. And if they do, they're going to want it for a lot cheaper than I would want to sell it for. And, or they're going to want it to be ni nice name brand. Now this is a combination of decent brands and also a lot that are not great. <clears throat> And so uh, people like to do the quote-unquote jewelry jar thing. I'm going to basically do that. I'm going to fill up each of these bags until they're all done. I'm going to have somewhere between, you know, around 30 bags probably worth. Each bag will be somewhere between 5 and 7 pounds is my guess. And I'm probably going to list those for right around $50, maybe free shipping. Um, now, if I were to try to sell 155 pounds costume jewelry i'd be lucky to get four or five hundred dollars for that but if i do it in 50 dollar increments which is a lot easier uh to stomach when you're a buyer um that's going to be you know 1200 or more dollars when it's all said and done all right believe it or not i'm not quite but close to halfway done and you can see i've got these baggies here full 
I'm not looking through it. I'm not sorting it. I'm just dumping it in, in here, you know. Um, whew, took about 30 minutes. And I'm going to try to finish her up. Shoey dogs, folks. Here we are. Got it all in here. And now, <laughs> I want to tell you this right here which represents about 150 some pounds is uh, after I already sold a lot of over a thousand pieces of hiring costume jewelry for $2,500. We still got this left over here. I uh, got all these spoons. I got some other ones. Here's some name brand ones. Uh, we got a lot to go through folks and that's not including the stuff made of gold and silver and the nicer stuff that came out of this lot. Thanks for sticking around cousins. Next up, we're gonna talk about things to sell Right before holiday season, we're going to talk about some things that we have just sold. We're going to get into more detail on some of these items that we got. And then come the very end of the year, well, I say that, right after January, we're going to have a very in-depth uh, discussion about YouTube channels. So that's what we are. We're a YouTube channel, but we're resellers. I want to tell you what our experience has been after two full years of running this channel. We have... Mm, we're about 30 or so videos away from a thousand videos in two years, which is a lot. And so have you ever thought about doing this yourself? Well, if you have, you want to hear from somebody who's going to be honest with you about an average regular channel? We'll tell you what to think about if that's something you're interested in. But we're going to get back to this jewelry. We're going to hit pocket knives. We're going to hit books. We're going to hit all kinds of these small collectibles, folks. We're going to try to teach you what their value is and how to sell them if you're so inclined. Good luck out there treasure hunting, folks. We'll see you soon. Be -do -bo -bo -bo. Let's go make some money. Rusty, rusty, rusty how to, rusty.